Hello and welcome to today's session on the Interval Weight Loss Program. I am Dr. Nick Fuller uh, and I am presenting from the University of Sydney with my virtual background. Now I'm unsure whether you can actually just see the uh, screens that I'm presenting on my slide or hopefully you can see not only the screens but also me and my virtual background uh, in my picnic environment. Now look, it's designed to be a fun field event. And if you, you know, have questions at the end of today's session, make sure to email. I will put up uh, the best email address. I will also put up the social channels so you can get in touch with me and the IWL team, uh, because this is all about a lifelong journey to help you break uh, that weight loss struggle that you may have had or to pass on that information to someone that may be on that dieting bandwagon and that may have struggled with their, their weight um, lifelong. Now, I'm lucky enough to work at one of, you know, Australia's leading institutions and it's, it's a fabulous place to work. Um, now, it's known as Charles Perkins Centre, named after Charlie Perkins. And within this centre, we have... Australia's largest obesity weight management service uh, in this in this centre, which is a collaboration between the University of Sydney and Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. Uh, we have the clinic. Now that clinic is where we see thousands of patients every year trialling and testing um, different products to paint a better picture of what weight management should look like. So we're not only looking at, you know, simple dietary interventions, uh, but also medical devices, pharmaceutical drugs, and at the other end of the spectrum being bariatric uh, or weight loss surgery. So I'm here to talk to you today about the work I do and the work I'm particularly passionate about, and that is how to prevent your body fighting the weight loss. Because typically, We've been able to go out now for, you know, close to four decades and have no problems losing weight, following diets, taking pills, uh, specially formulated foods, whatever it might be. But sadly, we keep ending up back where we started. We put on the weight um, and we end up heavier each time. If diets worked, we wouldn't see the obesity prevalence going up. And sadly, all the dieting industry has done is actually accelerate our problem in that it has made us heavier um, by going on and following these diets. There's a fascinating uh, study that looks at twins and it's, it's a bit of research I always like to talk uh, about, but basically, you know, we put, it followed these twins up um, over 25 years and the simple finding was that the twin that had dieted throughout their lifetime was always heavier than the one that didn't. So you've got two twins, uh, identical genetic material, but yet the one that's going out there and actively trying to manage their weight is ending up heavier. They're actually accelerating the problem uh, that they have. So that intentional weight uh, cycling or that dieting uh, only results in short-term results in terms of weight loss, and then you end up going back to where you started. But as shown with this twin research, you end up going back heavier and heavier and heavier. So in this research, the twin that wasn't dieting, the one that was just basically, you know, going along on the merry way, well, they were always lighter than the one was than the one that was actively trying to do something. So my work is all about um, dispelling, I guess, miss when it comes to uh, nutrition and, and, and your weight loss journey, uh, but also to translate an evidence-based program, which is the Interval Weight Loss Program. Now, there are three books on this uh, bit of science. The first one was Interval Weight Loss, which I released in 2017. The second one was Interval Weight Loss for Life to give you a more practical guide, uh, which came out 2018. And then at the start of this year, I release Interval Weight Loss for Women, which is definitely relevant for both women and men. The only difference is, um, or the only addition, 
is that it tackles some of those lifelong events that us men never have to go through. And so I'm talking about pregnancy, menopause, but also earlier on in your life uh, with that transition through adulthood and going on the contraceptive pill. So if you are male and you're watching this, this book is just as relevant and I would suggest you start with this book. You can learn it from your library. It does go into what I will describe later, uh, which are the six principles or the six simple steps to the interval weight loss plan, which basically are the six steps to long-term weight loss success. Now, what I want you to do is picture this person who we will call Jerry, but it could also be Jane and put yourself in their shoes. Now, Jerry or Jane could be, um, you know, a family friend or a colleague, or it could be even yourself. If you are struggling with your weight. And as I said, you've been on that dieting bandwagon, you've struggled to lose weight um, and keep it off. You just simply lost weight. But you keep going back to your start point every single time. And in most instances, instances, you keep ending up heavier. Now, Jerry represents uh, a person in the, a typical person in the modern day Western environment. Now, every day Jerry wakes up, a very clever part of his brain called the hypothalamus tells him when he should and shouldn't eat. A clever wiring system between his gut and his brain is telling him when he should reach for the food and when he should cease food intake. Now that this is due to basically that clever wiring system between the two where appetite hormones are produced, such as ghrelin in instances when you've gone without food for a long period of time, ghrelin goes up and tells you to go and get some food. It's telling you that you're hungry and you'll, you'll hear those hunger pangs in your stomach. Then in other instances, when you're eating or you've been eating a lot, uh, certain appetite and gut hormones will be released, which tell you to stop eating. So a couple of these are CCK, PP, PYY, um, uh, GLP-1. They're just fancy scientific names. But all you need to remember there is that, you know, there's appetite hormones telling us when we should eat. And then there's other appetite hormones telling us when we should stop food consumption. Now, up until the 1980s, this clever architectural wiring system was satisfactory to keep us within a health, a relatively healthy body weight range. Uh, you know, most of us didn't have a problem with our weight and the prevalence of overweight and obesity didn't really exist. But then in the 1980s, something happened. Okay. Something significant significantly change within our environment. We started to see a rise in processed and pa packaged foods. The abundance of fast foods became ev evident. We started to use computers, watch more screens, and cars became more readily available. We started to rely on them uh, much more often to get from A to B. Now, consequently, with that, and this time period being, you know, the 1970s and particularly in the 1980s came an increase in our waistline. Our waistlines began to grow at the rate of about 0.5 to one kilo every year. And it was due to this change in environment. There was a several different factors going on here, but as a result, the number of people struggling with their weight went up and up and up. And when you walk around in the modern day environment and, and you go out for lunch, everyone you look at, two in three of those people will be clinically diagnosed as suffering from overweight. So what I mean by that is two in three people are carrying a little bit too much weight and some of them uh, are really struggling and would be clinically diagnosed as having obesity. Now that's measured by a simple measure we, we use as body mass index, uh, which is quite a crude measure. But if your BMI is above 25 or 25 to 30, you're in the overweight range. Remember that's two in three people. 
And then if it's over 30, uh, it's in that obesity range. So Jerry's, you know, going along his merry way and then all of a sudden the environment's changed and his waistline started to grow. And it's growing at the rate of 0.5 to one kilo every year. Now, the other important thing to realize is that not only has Jerry put some weight on during this time and he looks in the mirror and, you know, 10 years later, he's 10 kilos heavier. But at the time when we started to see this increase in prevalence of overweight or number of people struggling with their weight, we also saw the boom of the dieting industry. Everything from pills and shakes, specially formulated foods and a new diet pretty much every week of the year. So we started to get bombarded with diet information. Late night advertising, specially formulated foods, promising that magic cure that we were looking for. You know, the lose 10 kilos in two weeks. And cut this food out of your diet and the, the weight will magically disappear. Now, sadly, one day Jerry, Jerry, or Jane, they're sitting at home, but Jerry in this instance is sitting at home and his wife, Elizabeth, says to him, I think it's about time you do something regarding your weight. You know, it's been a few years, your weight's been going up. Um, and my friend, Jennifer, is, is, has been doing really good on this diet. How about you, you give it a go? You've got, you know, nothing really to lose um, because you just can't keep going on this path where every year you're getting heavier and heavier. So he signs up and we'll just call it uh, diet X signs up to diet X and you know, he cuts out certain foods and um, at times he's, 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 you know, really restricting his food intake and, and following these strict Millis and exercise programs. And he does great, you know, over these 10 week, this 10 week program, this diet that he's following, he loses 20 kilos. Jerry goes out and celebrates. He goes out with his wife, Elizabeth. They go out with family and friends and they celebrate all this weight that he's lost. He's a new man. But not long after, sadly, Jerry starts to put the weight back on. He's looking in the mirror and he can't understand why. He's still implementing a lot of these principles of the, what he thinks or considers that healthy diet or that food plan or that program that he's following. But yet the weight keeps going back up. Sure, he slipped back in some of his old habits, but he still can't seem to justify the amount of weight that's come back. And before he knows it, he's regained the entire lot. The whole 20 kilos has come back. But not only that, he's actually ended up putting on about 21, 22 kilos. So he's ended up heavier than before he started. He sits down with his wife and they brainstorm and they wonder what's been going on. You know, Elizabeth has been very supportive along the way. So he basically says, well, why don't I give it another go? And she says, yeah, that's a great idea. So he signs up again. Now, the unfortunate thing is that Jerry, much like Jane and everyone else in this population, is doing this four to five times every year. By the age of 45, Jerry has been on 61 diets. Jane has been on 61 diets. People are spending 31 years of their life, 31 maddening years of their life dieting. They're going through that same cycle all the time. They lose, they regain, they lose, they regain. And often they go back to the same products, the same diets, the same weight loss programs because it worked in the short term. And they keep thinking that the only reason they didn't keep it off is due to the fact that they didn't stick to it. So Jerry keeps going along this way. He trials different uh, products and diets and shakes over the many years. But, you know, sadly, he doesn't do well. And as I described, he loses, regains, loses, regains along the way. And that inner sil silhouette changes in, out, in, out over the many years of his white weight cycling. Now, the scary thing about this is that he doesn't just regain the weight, but go back to that clever architectural wiring system that I described at the start. He actually disrupts this. Every time that he goes to lose weight, that appetite signaling system 
it just is disrupted. And this is just one of many, and in fact, eight well-researched biological pathways, which I discuss in my latest book, Interval Weight Loss for Women, that are disrupted with weight loss. So every time you lose weight, they kick into gear. And what I mean by that is, every time you lose weight, you are doomed for failure because your body will fight that weight loss. And this is the very reason why fewer than 5% actually succeed on their weight loss journey long-term. And what I mean by that is five years and beyond. So going back to these biological pathways, now Jerry's been losing weight. Every time he loses weight, these biological pathways that I'm referring to, well, one, I, I mentioned the appetite hormones. So what's happening there is they will change in the sense that they tell him to eat more. So ghrelin, that, that hormone I was talking about, that goes up. It tells Jerry to go and reach for more food. This is not a subjective feeling that he has. It's an objective um, result of the weight loss that has happened. So he's lost the weight, yet his appetite hormones are changing, telling him to go back for more food, to reach for more food and to keep eating. Now this happens until he regains the weight. But as I said, the scary thing is it doesn't just go back to baseline. Even after he's regained the weight, Jerry's appetite hormone signaling system stays disrupted. It stays in a state where it continues to tell him to keep eating more food, even though he's regained the weight. And this is because our bodies are very smart. It learns to save a little bit of extra fat, a little, a little bit extra for that next bout of starvation that you're likely to impose on it. So it stores more for next time. And it all, it's all due to evolution. We would often go, during our time as hunter-gatherers, we would often go long periods of time without food. So our body learnt to shut down so that our weight wouldn't continue to drop. The same thing happens in the modern day environment. And it's what us scientists refer to as an evolutionary mismatch. You put the, the same genes, which haven't changed, over all these hundreds of thousands of years in the modern day environment where food is everywhere, we have a very time hard, hard time saying no. But not only that, even when you do lose the weight, your body, remember, is telling you to go back and reach for more. Now, that's one of the eight well-researched pathways. Another one that we all know and, and refer to often is our metabolism. Now, when you lose weight, in this instance, when Jerry loses weight, his metabolism or metabolic rate actually lowers so that he starts burning less energy at rest. If he's burning less energy at rest, again, it means that slowly but surely his weight's gonna to continue to go up. And it's another one of those pathways that doesn't go back to baseline. There's some fascinating uh, research that's been done on this, but from a very topical show, um, or what was a, a very um, watched show called The Biggest Loser, when people lose weight, they regain it. And again, their metabolisms don't go back to their starting point. So you've regained the weight, but yet your metabolism and the energy and your engine, which is what you refer to as your metabolism, is actually revving along a lot slower than it used to. Now, that's an unfavorable state to be in because again, it just means your weight's gonna slowly go up. So Jerry's been doing all this weight cycling over the many years and he's realized that he just can't seem to beat his body. And not only that, every time he succeeds with the weight loss, he only ends up back where he started. He used to find weight loss much easier than in most recent years. And with every extra bout of diet or diet that he tries, he's actually finding it harder. He doesn't respond to weight loss like he used to. He still loses, but he does find it more difficult to shift those kilos. But it doesn't matter anyway, because he still ends up going back to where he started. And over the many years, all he's found is that he's, ending, he's ended up heavier each and every time. Now, lucky for Jerry, he's sitting at home one day and he turns on the TV and he sees Dr. Nick on the Channel 9 Today Show. 
He listens to what he has to say about how the body works and all of the education that I've just explained to you. He learns that those many years of failure weren't due to a lack of willpower. They were actually due to his biology. Now, what he does learn also is that evidence has shown now that the only way to actually lose weight and prevent your body fighting itself is to buy is by following what is known as the interval weight loss plan. You lose you know, weight in two kilo intervals. So Jerry loses a couple of kilos over the first month. He then maintains his weight for the second month. He then goes on and loses weight again for the, the third month. Then he maintains, loses, maintains, and he continues to follow this until he loses that, you know, realistic goal weight loss of about 20 kilos um, over the course of around two years. But importantly, he realizes that he's got nothing to lose because he's tried all the diets. He knows that he doesn't succeed on them long term. He only ends up regaining them. Now, as part of that education, he's listening to Dr. Nick and he hears that when he imposes those breaks along the way, that will actually stop his body fighting itself. He won't experience that usual change in appetite hormones telling him to eat more. He won't see that decrease in metabolism, which only ends up in him slowly putting the um, kilos back on, as well as the other six well-reached research biological pathways. They don't become disrupted when you lose weight in intervals. So he goes along his merry way, he finds it very hard that he has to actually stop every second month because it feels like it's slowing down the process, but he persists because of the fact that he's never been able to conquer this beforehand. The first few months are the hardest. Um, he's, he's getting his head around the principles, the six principles, uh, which I'll discuss in a second. And over the course of a few months, he starts to form habits. As he's learning to form these new habits, the weight continues to come off in a roughly two kilos every second month. It's never picture perfect. Some months he loses one kilo, then he maintains. The next month he loses two and a half kilos, then he maintains. But roughly, his plan is doing this down, across, down, across, down, across. He gets to that 20 kilo weight loss, takes him a couple of years, and he finds that he doesn't have his body fighting itself. His metabolism hasn't gone down, and his appetite hormones haven't gone up telling him to eat more. Along the way, he learns about these six principles. And as I mentioned at the start of the talk, these are basically the six steps to long-term weight loss success. They're about obviously what we should be putting in our body, how we should be moving, how to get better, better quality sleep, but other important things like how to overcome food addiction, because it is very hard in the modern day environment to say no to all of our favorite foods. We have become wired to keep reaching for the processed and packaged and fast foods because they make us feel good. But again, along the way, Jerry, for example, Leap, learns about how his brain works. He learns that he gets the same pleasure response in the brain from nature's treats, the fruits, the nuts and seeds, the avocado and whole grain bread. He learns how to, do, to structure his portion sizes throughout the day, that he should be eating from big to small and that he should be slowing down his food consumption by using something he's uncomfortable with at the evening meal, like an oyster fork, a teaspoon, or even chopsticks. He learns how to improve his sleep quality by preventing disruption to his circadian rhythm. And that's around the no blue light after twilight. He learns as I described that he needs to lose weight in intervals, two kilograms roughly every second month to prevent his body fighting himself. And he learns that he should be eating more. All of those years of deprivation have just been due to those strict four, eight, 12 week diets that he's been following. You know, eat these many calories, weigh out these many uh, grams of chicken and, and foods and, and you will succeed. But deprivation is not the answer. And with the full rainbow principle, he learns he does actually eat much more than he's used to. 
but yet the weight still continues to come off. He gives his body the nutrition it needs and it flourishes as a result. And then lastly, he learns to incorporate activities that he enjoys because in the past, he's followed all those strict militant and exercise programs. You know, he's done his best to stick to them uh, while he can, uh, for as long as he can, but he's always found that he goes back to old ways. So he starts to incorporate some activities and exercises he enjoys. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. It might be going out playing tennis, riding a bike or going to the park and doing some shuttle runs. And he also learns how to adjust that for the weight loss and the weight maintenance months. Now, if you're interested in getting your hands on this simple PDF of the six principles of the interval weight loss plan, I'll bring up the URLs in a second, but they are all available for you. Okay. So I do encourage you to start with just one thing and that is to print this off to watch the YouTube video on it so that you understand what the plans all about. If you can remember, get one of the books, read the books. The more you read it, the more you unlearn old information that you may have picked up in the past, because really what you need to do is just keep referring to IWL as your Bible to weight loss, nutrition, exercise, sleep, health, etc. And then you or your friend or your colleague like Jerry will succeed on the IWL plan. But remember, this is not the all or nothing approach. This is the evidence-based program to long-term weight loss success so that you prevent weight regain. We are, are not interested in the short-term weight loss that you get from the four, the 10 or the 20 week program. We are only interested in you preventing weight regain in you adopting the six principles of the IWL plan so that you form lifelong habits. And the one thing that you must realize with these principles is that it doesn't happen overnight. It actually takes 66 days to change an old habit into a good habit. And when you first start out on IWL, the best thing you can do is pick one or two of them, work on that and then move on to the next one. Because if you try and adopt all six of these at once, you might find it too overwhelming. You might end up going back to your old ways and you're not going to achieve what you're setting out to achieve. So if you're looking for extra help, I encourage you to jump on the intervalweightloss.com.au site. All of the social channels are here too. But importantly, if you have questions, um, email us. Okay, Hello at intervalweightloss.com.au to have your question answered. But now the other great thing is since uh, January 2020, we now have an interval weight loss online program and interval weight loss app. Now I'm going to bring this up um, on my phone and show you and see if this will come up on the, the virtual background. But if you go to intervalweightloss.com.au, uh, you can click through to the online program. And this is for those that want extra support and extra accountability. You can succeed by following the books, reading the materials and rereading them and, and tracking your own data. But if you want extra support, you can also do that with the IWL app, but you need to go to intervalweightloss.com or intervalweightloss.com.au to sign up, to set your pro, to, to get your personalized IWL program so that you can then track your data uh, and start to form lifelong habits. This will give you better, better detail on what the plan involves. Um, it gives you your daily habit tracker so you can go in and start to log habits. And it will look something simple like this. Now, I don't know if it's going to come up that great on the virtual background, but if you have a look, it also has your daily habit tracker down the bottom and many other things like detail on exactly what you should be eating, um, a supportive community group, which is just for those that are signed up to the online program. And then other things like IWL recipes. So there's a large database of recipes, which I'll try and bring up right now to show you but it's for those that are looking for extra help. 
So I guess there's two things to, to note. One, go and read the book. You can get all the information from the books. The more you read it, uh, the more you'll pick up and the more you'll unlearn those old um, behaviours and wrong information you may have been told over the many years through the dieting industry. And then secondly, if you're looking for extra support, you can sign up to the online program, the IWL app, which is by going to intervalweightloss.com.au or intervalweightloss.com um, and getting access to your own personalised uh, program, IWL dashboard and weight tracker. It'll allow you to track not only your weight and, and set your goal weight for you, but also give you access to the large database of recipes, as I mentioned, um, the daily habit tracker, so to in order to help you form those lifelong habits, uh, but also so you have that accountability that people often need to succeed. Okay, so by logging your data and being accountable to yourself, uh, it, it may mean that you are more likely to succeed and get through that initial period as well, because the hardest time is the first few months. This is not a program that um, is, is like everything else in the sense that it is a descriptive approach. It's not that prescriptive approach where uh, in the past you get told and shown what meal plans to follow, how many calories to eat, how many grams of food to weigh out. It doesn't work long term. You need to get rid of that headspace and that mentality and move away from that. You need to trust in the principles of the IWL plan and the evidence um, behind it and you need to focus on the long term okay so this is not about setting uh, or fixating on weight the weight loss will come but you need to focus on health goals okay if you focus on health goals um, you will be able to break through that barrier and you will notice an improvement in your health from the get-go the minute you start into a weight loss you'll start to see that increase in vitality and energy levels the improvement in blood pressure and cholesterol level it doesn't really matter what it is or what you're assessing, but you will notice that change. Now, the weight loss will come straight away for many too. If you haven't been on an extensive dieting bandwagon uh, in the past or you haven't re recently come off a diet, you're also likely to get the weight loss you're after straight away. But if you have been on that dieting bandwagon, remember you have been imposing damage on your body. It needs time to recover the interval weight loss plan will allow your body to recover, but it just means that you need to have a little bit more patience. The weight loss may not come straight away, but if you go back to the dieting world and go and follow the next diet that hits the shelves, you're only gonna end up putting more damage on your body. So sort of the, the two things there, one, go and read the, the resources. If you've got questions, reach out. Two, for more information, accountability, and detailed information on, on, on the plan. You can get your online program, um, which also includes that, remember that supportive community group. So you can touch base with other people that are following the program and at all different stages, some that are just starting and, and many that are years down the track that have lost the weight already and kept it off. I thank you for uh, tuning into today's session. Um, it's always a, a great pleasure to be able to spread the word um, to, to everyone throughout the country and across the globe. Um, I also encourage you to, to spread the IWL, IWL word um, because uh, this, is, this is all about spreading uh, an evidence-based program to continue helping people on their weight loss journey and importantly help them break that dieting cycle. So thank you once again uh, for tuning in. Remember, for questions and answers, uh, you can email us. You can jump on the socials uh, because, unfortunately, it's not a face-to-face -face where often much of the time is taken up with Q&A at the end. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, I look forward to hearing how you progress on your IWO journey um, and, and hearing from you if you have questions. So from Dr. Nick, I'm signing out. Uh, and hopefully until soon, if you join us in the community group, you will see me on Facebook Lives, uh, which I do deliver every week. Thanks once again. Bye.